Hello and welcome. Today we are going to take a look at LitCode 239, Sliding Window Maximum. This is an LC hard problem. You are given an integer array of nums. There is a sliding window of size k which is moving from the very left of the array to the very right. You can only see the k numbers in the window. Each time the sliding window moves right by one position. Return the maximum sliding window. So here we have an example with a bunch of numbers, 1, 3, minus 1, minus 3, 5, 3, 6, and 7, and k equals 3. And then we construct, as you can see here down below, windows of size 3, because k is 3, and we take the maximum of each, each window. So the maximum of this window is 3, so we have 3 to the right. The maximum of this window is also 3, so we have 3 to the right. The maximum of this window is 5, so we have 5 to the right and so on and so forth until we have the maximum of 7 for the last window. And here we have the output 3, 3, 5, 5, 6 and 7. So that's how the algorithm works. And then we have a second example <coughs> with uh, just one element and a window of size 1 and then we just output that one element. So then we have some, uh, some constraints. Okay, so we can solve this problem in multiple ways. First, let's try a brute force approach and uh, let's see how to solve that in that way. So we're just going to iterate through the array. Now the size and we don't want the last two elements. For example, if k is 3, because we want to have the window of size k, so then there are no more windows to, to be made. Okay. Then we initialize a variable to keep uh, the current maximum for the current window. And then for each element in the window, we update the current max. Okay. Finally, we push back the max to our result. Current max. Okay, let's see. Uh, start index. All right, so something is wrong here. I should initialize this to min. My bad. Yeah, now it worked. So we passed the regular test cases, but now if we click submit, have time limit exceeded and that's because the time complexity is going to be k for the inner loop and then n minus k plus 1 for the outer loop so that resolves to an n times k uh, time complexity if we simplify n minus k plus 1 times k all right you can report it either way it's n, n times k or n minus k plus 1 times k okay so this approach is not good enough so in order to properly solve this problem, we need to use some additional data structure to improve on our time complexity. And what we can do is we can use a double-ended queue or DAC. And we are going to see how that works. So let's go to the drawing. Okay, so we have our DAC here and uh, we have our uh, so we're going to push the indices of elements into our DAG, right? So first of all, we have the index of element 1, which is going to be 0. And then we're going to ask if our window size is at least of size k minus 1, because it's 0 index. Uh, 
and in this case it isn't otherwise we would push what we have as the maximum value and then on the next iteration we're going to check if our current element is out of bound using i minus k plus one so what we have in the queue is going to be zero so i minus k that's one and so now we are at the second element three one <coughs> minus three plus one so that's a negative number so that is not the case we are not out of bounds and then we're going to check if uh, the next element, the nums of i, which is element 3, is greater or equal to what we have in the back of the queue, which is going to be element with index 0, which is 1, and it is. So what we do is we remove element 0, and then we push element 1 with index 1. So that's going to be 3. Okay, so now we have element 1 in our queue, our window size is going to be with i, i, i is going to be 1, so the window size is not going to be uh, large enough, so we go to i equals 2, i equals 2, and then we have element minus 1, so we have 2 minus 3 is minus 1, plus 1 is 0, is the one that we have uh, in our queue uh, greater than zero? Yes, it is, so we are not out of bounds. And then we check if the current element nums of i is greater, so minus one, than the element uh, with uh, index one, which is three, it isn't. So we add minus one, the element with index minus one, to the back of the queue, so that's two, right? 0, 1, 2, and then we increment i. Oh, before we do that, we have to say that our maximum is at the front of the queue. So we have element <coughs> with index 1, that's 3, and we add it to our result. We add 3 to our result, and then we can increment i again. So i is now 3. Okay, and we have i minus k plus 1, that's 3 minus 3, 0, plus 1, 1, is 1 uh, less than 1, no it isn't, so we uh, <coughs> keep it as it is, and then we check if our nums of i, which is minus 3, is greater <coughs> than what we have in the queue, and no it isn't, so we add it to the back, and then we add again the front of the queue, which is 3, we add it to our result and then we increment our index to 4 and now we have element 5 <coughs> and again check if index 4 minus 3 uh, is 1 plus 1 is 2 right and 2 is greater than 1 which is what we have in the front of the list so we remove 1 And then we check if our current nums of i, which is 5, is greater than what we had had in the back of the queue. So, for example, element with index 3. And it's greater, and it's also greater than the element with index 2. So we remove both elements from the queue. And we add our new index 4 in our, in our queue. Okay. And, <clears throat> and then we push the... Fr uh, we push the element at the front of the queue to our result, so that's going to be 5. And then we increment our index again. We increment our index again to 5. So that's element 3. And then we ask if uh, 5 minus 3, that's 2, plus 1 is 3. If uh, 3 is greater than four it isn't and then we ask if the element is greater than uh what we had before so if three is greater than five it isn't so we simply push it to our queue push index five okay 
and then after that we add our result the front of the queue again that's four and that's the other one that index four so that's actually five right okay so now we increment our i again and i is now six <clears throat> and then we check if 6 minus 3, that's 3, plus 1, 4, 4 is greater than 4, no, there's nothing to remove. And then we check if the element 6 is greater than the element with index 5 and the element with index 4, and it's greater than both, 6 is greater than both, so we remove both elements from our queue. And we push 6, index 6 and value 6, right? So now we also add this to our result. And we increment i again, 7, this is going to be the last one. Uh, so we have 7 minus 3, that's 4, plus 1, that's 5. Is uh, 5 greater than 6? It isn't. So then <clears throat> we're not out of bounds. So then we check uh, if the element nums of i is greater than what we had in the back of the queue, which is 6. So yes, it is. So we remove 6. And we push 7. Okay, now we have 7. And uh, we pushed it. So again, we check if the window size is larger than k minus 1. It is. So we just add 7 to our result. Okay, so that's it. Now i goes to 8. And we are finished. We are out of bounds. All right, so as you can see, this algorithm is ON in terms of time complexity because all the operations push and pop from the double-ended queue are O of 1. And then we also have a space complexity of maximum O of K since the queue will store maximum K elements. Uh, all right, so let's go to the code and see how this looks like. Okay, so... for i first we push something in our queue and then we check if the i is greater or equal to k minus 1 and if so we push to the result nums of the front of the queue We only keep the we only keep the maximum, right? And the way we do that, as we said before, is we uh, check initially while our queue is not empty, and nums of i is greater or equal nums of q dot back. Q that pop back, right? So we pop back all the elements that are not that are smaller than the maximum. Pop back all elements smaller than the current maximum. Current element. Keep max value only. All right. And what we also have to do is to check if we are out of bounds. Uh, so in terms of the window size. So if the queue is not empty and Q front is less than i minus k plus 1. Then we pop front. So we only keep the last k elements in our queue. All right. Okay. 
So let's see. Q push back. Push back. Okay, it's accepted. And accepted. And we can see the time complexity. Well, if you would be able to see it, of k space complexity, and no of n time complexity, exactly as I've said before uh, during the explanation. So we only keep, we keep max k elements in the queue, in the double end queue. So space complexity is okay. Okay, and O and time complexity for the main loop. <clears throat> and then here we're just removing elements, so we're not uh, increasing the time complexity. We're still only iterating through those N elements. Okay, and everything here, push back, pop back, pop front, push back, all of these are O1 operations. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this problem. Uh, if you did, uh, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more C++ problems. Thank you and bye.